there is some evidence that, and that has to do with the structure of our blood cells, our red blood cells, they have the same structure as chlorophyll in the plants. And they're used to grab energy of light and transmute it into, into uh, biological energy. And as you know, in nature, nature, God didn't, didn't, didn't and doesn't make anything that does not have value, does not have utility, that is not useful. Anything that exists, exists for a purpose and has a reason and has utility. So there's no reason that we would have red blood cells that are, what in chemistry we call it photo, photoreceptive cells. They're, in other words, they're designed to absorb light. Why would we have that in our blood? No one has ever answered that question because there's no obvious reason, okay? But it exists and things don't exist unless they're necessary. Because the universe, whether we like it or not, everything here is necessary, right? Now, what do we do? We walk around asking, what's better? Is this better or that better? And if I asked you what's better, day or night, what would you tell me? What's better, up or down? What's better, men or women? The answer to all of them is that they're both necessary. And you remove the morality. There's no better. It's not good. This is good and that's bad. It's all necessary. Why is it necessary? Because it is. Why is it? Because God wants it to be. I don't know. If you, have a, if you have another explanation for why things are, I would love to hear it. Interestingly enough, along those lines, our bodies were designed to eliminate toxins. So what does that tell you about toxins? They must be necessary. Otherwise we wouldn't have a mechanism already in existence to get rid of them or to process them, or to change them. It's just like when, when human beings, I think way back, way back when, maybe a couple thousand years ago, if somebody was in a lot of pain and they were dying, they would give them the milk of the poppy. Today we have refined that into morphine, heroin, things like that. Now people think, oh, but heroin addiction is bad. People, it ruins lives. Their people are killing people, blah, blah, blah. so it's bad. No, it's not bad. Why do I know it's not bad? Who made it? It has a purpose. Interestingly enough also is that why when we take in opium, heroin, why does it have an effect on us? A, a, a pleasurable effect It takes away pain, makes you mellow. Why does it do that? Because in our body we have receptors for opium. opium. Opium, opiate derivatives. Well, why would we have receptors on our cells for opium? Because our body makes opium. And in, in, in uh, biochemistry and in physiology, we call that endorphins. Endorphin, the word endorphin. Endorphin stands for endo-endogenous, produced inside, from inside, orphan, endo-orphan, endogenously produced morphine. They're called, and endorphins are the chemicals that our body makes. And we have what are called opiate receptors all over our body. So when we take in opiate, it immediately goes to the receptors. It turns out we also have cannabinoid receptors, which is the chemical produced by ganja, ganja, marijuana, hashish. Our body produces what are called endocannabinoids. And then we have receptors in our brain, we have receptors in our gut, we have receptors all over our body. So these are called endocannabinoids. Okay, so it turns out that everything that has an effect on us, which is a, a profound effect, is we have receptors. Now, if we don't have receptors, what happens? We get sick or our body, we start, we, we develop itching, we get, you know, we get really sick and we, we die. So again, so then it gets really, really difficult to define what is a toxin. It's really hard to define what is a toxin.